Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to be sensitive to God. I was in the back, and I was just wrestling back and forth. And while I was back there, man, he just, I, I, I don't, I just started writing, jotting down things, man, that he was giving me. And so um, I think I'm going to hang with the notes today a little bit. And so um, last, last couple of weeks when I've been talking about messy miracles, everybody say messy miracle. How many of y'all know that's what we are? I know you may be proper. I know, you, I know that uh, your nails look good. And I know your hair's all dooed up. And I know you hope you smell good. But here's the deal. We all, from front to back, no matter how many alphabets you got behind your name, I'm just telling you, we all are a messy miracle. We all are a messy miracle. But I'm praising God in the middle of my mess. He still got a message in my life. He never dropped me. God's too big to drop me. How many of y'all know that God's just too big to, to drop you? And so today, here's what I'm going to do. Messy miracle part three. I'm going to try to preach this. I'm God's, y'all got to work with me. Be patient with me because here's the deal. God's speaking to me right now, and I got to listen to his voice. So I got a decision. Drew, it's not a coincidence that God gave me this to, for you guys. Last week, I had Pastor Drew up here blindfolded him, spun him around. Y'all remember that? Had him find the water. Water in the Bible means Holy Spirit. Okay, Holy Spirit. Everybody say Holy Spirit. That's a dangerous name, by the way. That's a dangerous name. So today, what I want to do, I want to show you what, what happens when God opens your eyes. What happens, we as Christians, when God opens our eyes? We got a lot of people that can see fleshly. We got a lot of people that can see physically. I'm, here's my thing, my agenda today. Can you see spiritually? Spiritually. Because that's the ticket, because you are a spirit, you have a soul, but you live in a body. It is so important, listen to me, church. It is so important that you see spiritually. I double dog dare you to look to heaven and say, God, open my eyes today. Yeah, come on, y'all do it. It's all right, it's all right. This is not First Baptist of Frigidaire. Amen. So I double dog dare you to look to heaven and say, God, open my eyes today. Lord, open my eyes today. Lord, I want to see you today. That's my prayer. So here's where we're we're going to have some fun. Drew, come on back up here. I had so much fun. Because this, what I'm getting ready to show you is real. There's a lot of voices in your life. Whether you admit this or not, listen, I can hear the enemy's voice too. I sure can. I, yeah, the enemy speaks to me. Sometimes I hear his voice louder than I do God's. But it's true. So today, here's what I want to do, man. We're going to have some fun. You already took your glasses off. You're awesome, man. He's on it. He's on it. Y'all, it was so sad last week. Y'all know when Drew was up here, I thought he was coming to the altar to get his glasses back. But he wasn't looking for his glasses. He had a word God was giving him. It's so good, so good, so good, so good, so good, so good. Ring around the rose. I love that. How old are you again? 32. You got it. You got it. All right, stop. Stop, stop. All right, this time, though, I want uh, Sarah. I want Aniston and his father, David, and Pastor Joy to come up. So here's the deal. I'm going to try my best, try my best to get Pastor Drew to the water with other voices in his life. With other voices, because some of you can hear the enemy really loud. Now, that's not his enemy. Let me preface this a little bit. He's got an amazing father that can, the fish, when the fish feel him coming on the waters, they run, amen, they run. Yeah, he's a fisherman, hallelujah. He's like the apostle Peter, hallelujah. I'll go another direction if I'm not careful. Got his bride, I got his his two daughters. How many of you know when, when your daughters say, daddy? That's a voice. I got his friend, Joey. So we got ministry, we got family, we got fishing. We got, we got I don't know what they're going to say, to be honest with you. I just told Drew to work it up, and he worked it up. So we're going to obey the Spirit this morning, amen? So here's the deal. Listen for God's voice. Everybody say that. Listen for God's voice. Come on, say it again. Listen for God's voice. He's got a voice. He does not have spiritual laryngitis. He's got a voice. My sheep know my voice. They hear my voice, and they f- follow me. After you hear his voice, you got a decision to make. Are you going to follow him? Keep stepping. You listen to my voice, 
Follow my instructions. Follow my instructions. Because you're going to have a lot of voices in your life. You ready? You're going to have a lot of voices in your life. So listen for my voice. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right. Because sometimes God don't speak loud. Sometimes he whispers. So this is going to be really good. Y'all ready? Y'all glad you come to church today? Oh. Okay. Let me try this again. Okay. <laughs> Y'all glad you came to church today? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Pray. All right. Okay, so here's the deal, man. You ready? Let's go around and around and around again. Good deal. All right. All right, you ready? Here we go. Start walking. Start walking. Walk, walk. All right, go to your left. Two steps, two steps. To your left. There you go. Hey, Drew, how's hey man, keep, keep, keep walking. Keep walking. Hey, Drew, you got a word for real life group? Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Stop. 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 Hey, Drew, you sure that's the right word for real life group? When's the last time you prayed to me? I need to talk to you today. Hey, Drew. I need to talk to you. Your mom and dad and my two mom and dad are to the, the right. I really need you to take three, this three steps to your right. You really three steps to your right. Go ahead, do it again. Do it again. I heard that. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what she said. <laughs> All right, listen, go forward. Go, go forward. Go forward. All right, we'll, we'll talk, talk. All right, I'm going to take your left, left hand. Left hand, grab the rail. Grab the rail. Hey, Drew, what about right. real life worship? Right, right there. We're going to start that back. You got six steps. Hey, Drew, I've got the two groups. Six steps. I really need help cleaning. Don't stop. All right, keep going. Two more steps. Hey, Drew, you're going to try to help me get the uh, doors painted. Turn left. Hey, Drew. Keep what about, walking. What about the meals for real life? Net nights. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Me, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. All right, stop. Aniston, go to your daddy. Go to your daddy. Don't disobey my voice. <laughs> Drew, your daughter's in front of you. Spend time with her. Hug her. Love her. See, cause listen, God, God's so good. Go ahead and love on her, man. It's okay. It's your family. Because God don't want you to get out of order. Listen. I'm, I'm preaching really good. Go ahead and go ahead and y'all hug each other. Y'all spend time with each other. If you put ministry before your family, you're out of order. I'm preaching really good. If you put if you put ministry, if you put your job before your family, you're out of order. Y'all need to, we need to hear this. We need, we need to hear this word. All right, that's good. Y'all can walk with me if you want to. It's fine. Drew, and he, she left him. <laughs> How true is that? That's so good. We didn't come up with this stuff. All right. Um, you're, you're his help meet, right? Help him walk. He's down in ministry. He's hurt in life. He's, he's disgusted with church. He's been hurt by Christians. He's got somebody in his life that needs to help him walk. We all need somebody in our life that's going to help us walk this journey out. I need this whole family to turn to their, to their left now. Drew, walk straight forward with your bride, with your daughter, with, with your daddy, with, with joy. Yeah. Come on. Come, come on. Keep stepping. Don't stop. Listen for my voice. Follow my instructions. All right. Stop. Kneel down. Kneel down. Put your left hand out, right hand out, over to the left just a little bit. Down. Down, my son. Down. 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 Because see, when he wins, they win. Because they're together. They're walking life. They're walking this journey together as family as friends. Now watch this. Watch this. Take your blindfold off. It's all right. Look around you. Here's the, y'all ready? Here's the most powerful thing. When the man took his blindfold off, we forget this. What did he do next? He looked up. He looked up. He looked around. And then the ones that were around him, he washed their hands. Watch this. I found my miracle. I want y'all to get yours too. So y'all kneel down with me. <laughs> Isn't that good? 
Isn't that good? We make church all about us. We make life all about us. We made everything about us. It is my job to help you and to help my family to get to the water. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Watch, he's washing their hands. You gotta be a hand washer. You gotta be a foot washer. You gotta go to a level that nobody else wants to go. We have made Christianity in churches about the biggest church and who's got the spotlight and what's happening here and what's happening there. It is about, watch this, I feel the Holy Ghost. If the lower you can get, the higher he'll get. The, the lower you get, the higher he'll become. It's about us kneeling down, finding the water, the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit gets in us, you will wash people's hands that are around you. Somebody give God a big old praise in here today. That's so good. That's so good. That's so good. Give his family a big old hand too. Thank y'all so much. So there's four times in the Bible. I'm not gonna go through all these. I'm just gonna give you the scripture. You can take it down because God's wanting me to go a different direction right now, and I'm going to obey him. There's four times. Everybody say four times. In Scripture, that God opens somebody's eyes. Literally opens their eyes. And again, we got so many people, church leaders, that we can see physically. This morning, I pray a spiritual eye-opening event in your life. And here's what God just spoke to me. If you will open your heart, he'll open your eyes. Yeah, if you will open your heart up, he'll open your eyes up. That's a good word. I'm going to say it one more time. If you open your heart up, he'll open your eyes up, and you'll, you'll start seeing. But watch this. Four times in Scripture, God opens someone's eyes. Four cases, God's opened their eyes. And watch this. Every time God opens your eyes, you'll see something spiritual. You'll, you'll see something spiritual. First time is in Genesis 21, 19. Genesis 21, 19, I'm going to fly like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Help me, Holy Ghost. The Bible says in Genesis 21, 19, this is the first time. Remember, say first time. Don't go to sleep on me. First time that God opened somebody's eyes. So this tells me you can be a Christian with your eyes closed. The Bible says, Genesis 21, 19, then God, I love that. Then God opened her eyes. Opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. Oh, man, help me. Help me. So she went, after she seen the water, she went, she, she filled it up. Not about her. She filled it up with skins of water and gave the boy a drink. It was her son. It was Ishmael. And if you know anything about Ishmael, a lot of people give Ishmael the, the, the wrong uh, theology, but the Bible says I'm going to make that boy a great nation. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that. So listen to me. Everybody, somebody say, well. I love that. When I, when I go to my black churches, they go, well, well, I love that. Hallelujah. Here's what I'm saying. God can make a, a, a well in the middle of your dry season. God can make a well spring up in the midst of a dry season. Some of you feel dry. Some of you say, Brian, when I come to church, I don't feel anything. I'm telling you, the first thing this mama seen, listen to me, the Bible says she put Ishmael under a bush. She walked away a bow sling. In other words, if you take a bow and arrow, you pull it back. She got that far away from her son. She started praying because she thought, I'm in the desert. I have no food. I have no water. And so the first thing God told me was, when God opens your eyes, you will see his provision. You will, see, you will be able to look back over your life. And there may be a dry season in your life, but I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ that God is a provider. He's your Jehovah Jireh. He'll make a rock produce water. Come on, somebody. He'll put a well in a dry area of your life, and all of a sudden, they spring up. It may not mean nothing to a lot of you. Some of you, you're so blessed, you forgot where your blessings come from. Some of you are walking around, money in your pocket. You better never forget who gave you that money. Elkhorn, we better never forget where God has brought us from. You better never forget 
what God has done for you in your life. He's our Jehovah Jireh. Somebody say Jehovah Jireh. That means he's our provider. When God, I love this, that mama was crying out because her son was getting ready to die. Die. She, God opened her eyes and the first thing that she seen, God, you're my provider. You provided water for me and my son. That's powerful. And you know the only way you're ever gonna realize that is if you have a dry season. Everybody wants the mountains. But I'm telling you, I, I'm spitting today. Y'all better be glad y'all six feet apart. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I have found God more in the valley than I have up on the mountain. I found God when I thought I was busted and disgusted, broke up. Come on, somebody. You got to know where you come from. You know who the praisers are not? Is the ones that really don't know where God's brought them from. We're going to heaven. He provided a way. He sent his son, Jesus Christ. Woo, let me go number two on you then. Because some of you don't understand. Woo, they say if you got a dollar in your pocket, you're richer than 80% of the world. Just a dollar. A dollar. The second time God opened somebody's eyes, I'm going to go fast, was in Numbers chapter 22. I love this. Help me, Holy Spirit. Verse 31 34. Numbers 22, 31 and 34. The Bible says, Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes. I love this story because this is proof right here that donkeys can talk. Yes, it is. Oh, I'm a... <laughs> and he saw, God opened his eyes. What was the first thing that Balaam saw? Watch. He saw an angel. I don't believe in angels. Well, you don't believe in the Bible. Right. Yes, sir. He saw an angel of the Lord standing, watch, watch this, in the way. I thought I could preach all by itself right there. An angel was standing in his way. I'm going to say it again. An angel was blocking him from somewhere he should not go. And he had, listen, standing in his way, he had his drawn sword in his hand. And he bowed his head and he fell flat on his face. I'll never, you'll never see me fall down on my knees and give God praise. I'm, you just never had a Balaam moment. You just never had a Balaam moment. You just never had a Balaam moment. I'm telling you, the, the lower you can go, the higher he'll get. I'm telling you, man, listen. And he bowed his head and he fell flat on his face. And Balaam said to the angel, Lord, I don't believe you can talk with them. You don't believe the Bible. Either this stuff is real or let's go home. Let's quarantine. Done with it. So watch, this is real. Watch what he said. I have sinned. Watch this, so good. For I did not know you stood in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displeases you, I will turn back. Let me preach this for a moment. I love this story because listen to me. The open eyes here the angel said, when, he, when, when Balaam opened his eyes, he knew he was going the wrong direction. So his open eyes meant, you need to go the right direction. You need to go the right direction. How many of y'all are thankful that you've got a God that when you're going the wrong direction? Yeah, come on, y'all. When you're, when you're going the wrong direction, that God loves you so much, he'll disrupt your path. He'll put an angel in front of you with a sword drawn. That's what the Bible says. And when Balaam opened his eyes, he raised, whoa, there's an angel in front of me. And he said these words, I stopped you from going the direction that you really don't need to go. And that spoke to me. Because, listen, as a teenager and as a young man, and now I'm getting up there close to 5-0. Uh, yeah, I know it, y'all. I need an angel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I, sometimes in my journey, I was going the wrong way. I was saying the wrong things. I was thinking the wrong things. I was doing the wrong thing. I was going the wrong direction. And I thought it was God, but it could have been an angel said, oh, that's enough. You can't go there no more. You can't talk like that no more. Y'all feel me this morning? It's an angel. And I'm telling I'm so thankful this morning. I am so thankful, y'all may not be, but I am so thankful this morning that God will stop me from going the wrong direction. 
Man, that's so good. Give God praise on that one, somebody. Come on. I love this third time God opened someone's eyes is 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16 and 17. And I, I read this over y'all's life. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16 and 17. And he answered, fear not, fear not. For they that be with us, I love this, are more than they that be with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may be able to see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, I love this, and he saw. And behold, the mountain, my God, was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. And I love this story about Elijah because this to me, so often we're so blinded to what God is doing around us, we miss the miracle. We see the mess, but we don't see the miracle. And so often, listen, open eyes here. Not, not only is he a provider, not only does it when God opens your eyes, he'll send you the right direction, but this third point is he's your protector. He shows you protection. Somebody say, thank you, God. He's protecting you. Every day, he's protecting us. Let me show y'all an interesting verse in the Bible. Genesis chapter four, verse seven. The Bible says that sin is crouching down at your door. Mm. Sin is crouching down at your door. Listen to me very carefully. Sin is just waiting for you to mess up. Church, I want you to lean in. I want you to listen. Listen to me. This is where it really gets good. After Elijah prayed, God opened his eyes and he seen the protection of God all around him. And I love this. He said, they that are with me, they that are with us are far more, hallelujah, than those that are with them. Yeah, Y'all get me this morning? I know you may feel down this morning, but your eyes are closed. Your eyes are closed. I'm telling you right now, I see chariots of fire all around this house, hallelujah. I see marriages that have chariots of fire in them, hallelujah. My children, my grandchildren, they're not just standing. I see chariots of fire, hallelujah, all around my baby. You say, Brian, I'm just not on fire like you. Watch this, turn to your neighbor and say, you're on fire today. Yeah, you're on fire today. Listen, we never doubt what God's doing in your life. Yes, I know we all got bad days, hard days, wrong days. But I'm telling you, I see chariots of fire. And I'm telling you, the first thing that Elijah seen when he looked up, he just didn't see the enemy on the hill side. He seen a great chariot of fire around his enemies. And he, I'm just telling you, greater is he that's in you than he is in the world. Amen? Hallelujah. Elijah said these words, I see chariots of fire. The fourth time, I'm gonna close with this. The fourth time God opened somebody's eyes. And I'm believing here today, listen to me, I'm believing here today that, God, that Elkhorn's eyes are gonna be opened up. That your pastor's eyes, I wanna see spiritual things. I wanna see spiritual things. I want y'all to hang with me, listen to me. The fourth time God opened someone's eyes, this is so good, I got a prop for this one, so y'all hang with me. Luke chapter 24, I love this. Verse 30 and 31, let me read this over you. So powerful, you with me, say amen. amen. It's on the big Bible if you don't have your word. Luke chapter 24, verse 30 and 31, this is the fourth time God opened someone's eyes, fourth time, and now it came to pass. As he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, he blessed it and he broke it, and he gave it to them. Look at verse 31. Then their eyes were opened. And they knew him. Uh-oh. And he vanished from their sight. Now I want you to hang with me because I'm almost done. I love this because, listen, the disciples. Everybody say the disciples. They invited Jesus to their home. <laughs> Let me dig deep right here. They invited Jesus to their home. Let me, let me minister here just a little bit. A lot of people know Jesus here, but did you invite him to your home? See, a lot of, a lot of and this is why I do this here at this church. Holy Spirit, God, Jesus, we welcome you. Just because it's got a steeple on the church don't mean it's his house. 
Listen to me. God spoke this to me. If you're a note taker, write this down. This is a good word from the Lord. Please make sure my children know I only go home with people who invite me. I only go home with people who invite me. And God is invited. The Holy Spirit is invited to this house. And listen, this word gets crazy. Jesus opened their eyes. Listen, here's what bothered me. Here's what bothered me, Jeff. They didn't see Jesus, but they was walking with him. They didn't recognize Jesus, but they were walking with him. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is so sad. This is so sad because I see it all the time. It's so true even today. Even today, because there are people that go to church day after day, Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday. They see salvation. They see miracles. They see it all, but they don't ever realize when God shows up. Oh, let that sink in just a little bit. God shows up. Let me ask you something. If Jesus Christ were to walk out today, would you recognize he left? I'm preaching good. Yeah. Just because you say you know him doesn't mean you had invited him to your home. First, ten, first Corinthians chapter 3, the Bible says the home, the temple, is your body. It's your body. Isn't it amazing? He took bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it. And I'm listen, this is our life. Our bodies hold the Holy Spirit. And this is going to go totally against some of your theology. But this is so true. When God opened their eyes, first of all, they realized how blessed they were. How blessed. How blessed I am to be here today. How blessed I am to be a daddy and a husband. How blessed I am to be a pastor. How blessed I am to have fingers and toes and ears and eyes. How blessed I am. The first thing they realize is, God, I took you for granted. I'm blessed. And then the funny thing was, he broke them. But I love this. I love this. If Miss Kelly's here, I promise I'll vacuum. See, the more tender you are, the more softer you are, when God breaks you, you realize it's not for you, it's to be given. It's to be given. It's to be given. <laughs> yeah, that's good. To be given. He blessed them, he broke them, he to give to be given. God, listen, this, this, this goes totally against the way I was trained in seminary. This goes totally against the way churches have taught me. Because I didn't know how to handle a breaking. I feel the Holy Ghost. I know some of you may have sickness going on in your body, but God is breaking you to be given. Some of you got family issues. Watch me. You say, I'm broken. Not for you, but to be given. But what happens if Jesus would have took the bread and... This is hard as a rock. I froze this thing <laughs> for 24 hours. 24 hours. See, some of you are under my teaching today. Listen to me. Some of you, you, you got two choices. You, either you're going to be moldable, mendable, and God's going to break you, and in the midst of your breaking, you're going to say, God, I may not understand this, but God, whatever you want to do in my life, I am broken to be given. And God, I, I don't, Lord, I don't understand it. In the midst of a divorce. In the midst of my children acting crazy. Church not going right. It, it is, but. <laughs> Marriage on the rocks. Hot steaming rocking. I'm good. But what I'm saying, it's not always been hot steaming and rocking. Can y'all handle truth today? It's not, church has not always been good. But I'm telling y'all, if you will listen to me, when God opened the fourth person's eyes, they realized how blessed they really were. 
And he said, in the midst of your blessing, I'm going to break you. But when I break you, I'm going to give you. And the more I break you, the more you can be given. So what, what do you do with or piece of, what do you do with the body that don't allow the breaking? What do you do when the body, God's like, I want to break you. Here's what I wrote down. Y'all got five more minutes, I promise. Job chapter 13, verse five. I can't help it. The word gets in me and I love this stuff. Here's the verse God gave me before I even got up here. Even though he slays me. Ha, listen what it says. Even though he breaks me, one translation. Job lost 10 children in one day. I don't understand that. Hey, listen to him. You talk about a breaking moment. That's a breaking moment. But watch what Job says. Even though you slay me, God, you break me, God, I will trust you. Y'all just give God praise on that one. I, I know some of you is going through some stuff. But I'm telling you, if you will let God open your heart, he will open your eyes. Because your heart's got a mind of its own. So, what do you do with this? What do you do when your heart... It's so hard, not even the Holy Spirit can change you. And I listen, I'm going to preach a sermon here hopefully soon. It's been brewing in my heart for 10 years. 10 years. And God has just released it that I can, I can preach this word. It's called God's Three Deadlines. Y'all don't want to miss that sermon. What do you do with the person who's supposed to hold the body? And God's wanting to break you. God's wanting to use you. God's wanting to show you his glory. God is wanting to take you to the water hole. God is wanting you to wash somebody else's hands. But what do you do with the Christian? Not even a hammer. Not even a hammer. What do you do with that hard heart that refuses to be broken? <laughs> and so, see, this right here, I don't even know if I can break this thing. Oh, yeah. But notice how this is so good. God's speaking. It don't break, it crumbles. <laughs> Somebody's going to miss that. Some of you are crumbling. The heat is on. The pressure's on. And you refuse. I feel the Holy Ghost for God to break you. So you're crumbling. Praise team, come. I got to get out of here. You're crumbling. You're not, you're not soft. You're not tender where God can mold you and squash you. <laughs> you say, why does God want to do that? Because your heart. Listen to me, your heart. Listen, we ain't got a racism problem. We got a heart problem. I'm going to throw this whole loaf. The church ain't watch. We ain't got a denomination problem. We got a heart problem. Take it with them. Kelly, I promise I'll vacuum. Let me ask you a question. Y'all ready? Are you crumbling? Or are you breaking? Whew. Which one are you this morning? Come on now, look good. But which one are you this side? Come on, which one are you? Come on this side. Which one are you? Are you crumbling? Or are you breaking? And the more God breaks you, hallelujah, the more he can give you. Yeah. What about this side? Come on, praise him. What's the prayer? Y'all here, aren't you? Let's do this. I'm ready. I'm so ready. Y'all crumbling or are you breaking? The heat is on. Are you crumbling or are you breaking? There's a difference. Come on this side. Or, which, which one are you? Are you crumbling or are you breaking? Because there's a difference. Same bread. Same ingredients. I wrote this down. Greg Ford spoke this. And Greg, I, this, let, me, let me say, let me preface this a little bit. Greg Ford said this. I stole it. What can you do with frozen bread? 
You can't cut it. You can't break it. You can't even hardly give it away. And the birds won't even eat it. So, which one are you? And I'm done. I preached what God gave me. But I'm telling you, if you could look at this table, what a difference. There's a bunch of crumbs up here. A bunch of crumbs in a few pieces. So I'm going to ask you, are you, a, are you crumbling? Or can God break you? So I want to pray this prayer, this altar. Listen, it's open. It's open. It's open. Let God work in y'all today. Let God work in y'all today. So Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I've done what you've told me to do. And God, I pray that God, you give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. God, may we find the water today. May we find the water today. And God, I pray that we would not crumble under the pressures of life. But God, as much as you break us, God, we'll be, have more to be given. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to stand to your feet all over this house. I love you. How many of y'all got the word today? Come on. How many of y'all got the word today? Come on. How many of y'all got the word today? All right. We're getting ready to find out. We're getting ready to find out. Some of you feel like you're crumbling. You're breaking, I'm telling you. But the more God can break you, the more God can give. Y'all got it? So in Jesus' name, as they sing this song, what are you singing, Beth? Great is thy faithfulness. Wow. Great is thy faithfulness. We're going back old school. Praise God. Because listen, we never need to forget about the school of hard knocks, the school that we come from. Because that school has a foundation that the new school was built on. And sometimes you got to go both schools. But let's graduate today. Amen. I love y'all. Let's come to this altar. Well, Brian, what about being six feet apart? God's bigger. God's bigger. If God is dealing with you, you come. Are you crumbling? And God just wants to break you. So in Jesus' name, best thing this, prophesy it over us, and let's come to this altar. Let God put us back together.